What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is the final late night review for Thursday night. Thank goodness, because the other two Thursday night shows did not go so well. This is Elementary, and third third episode of this fourth season, I liked it. I did. It was, it was nice. Uh, they are working with the NYPD again, which I, I did expect to happen. Um, and seeing some of the, the interaction again between uh, Detective Bell and Watson, you know, it was it, it is one of the reasons why I knew they would be working with the NYPD again, uh, you know, in the first episode when it seemed like they wouldn't be. Because these characters are just too good to get rid of. Um, Bell is just... Eh, he, he's hilarious. Uh, the way he reacts to stuff, um, the way, you know, he, he's a good cop, but the person of Detective Bell is just really enjoyable. Um, but anyway, that's, that's just one note. Um, the case itself, I, if, you, if you haven't watched Bones, if you, if you are not watching Bones right now, you won't get what I mean, <clears throat> but Bones needs to take some some pointers from Elementary right now because they know how to make a case interesting. Um, a lot of a lot of the cases in Bones this season so far have just been dull. They've been straightforward. It's a formula. Um, they question people. It's always the person in the last five minutes or the last ten minutes or something like that. It's always the person that they haven't questioned yet. Um, and it's, al it's almost always predictable. It's like, oh, that person. Okay, I can see that coming. But not elementary. And obviously part of that is because it's Sherlock Holmes. And Sherlock Holmes never tackles straightforward cases. Um, if they were straightforward cases, he'd have them solved like that. You know, it's just, it's Sherlock Holmes. He can do that. Um... So anyway, let's talk about why I like this case so much. On the one hand, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't straightforward, but it was, they thought they had solved it, but then they learned they didn't solve it. Um, that there's two men that w were shot and killed, they looked identical. There's a guy who helped set them up with their, or set one guy up with his doppelganger who had been attacked and was running and hiding. Um, and it just, they finally found out the guy who killed the two people uh, based on some information. Uh, apparently the, the main victim who, why can't I, I never remember names. I'm terrible with names. Golly. Anyway, it was Todd maybe? I, I hate that I can't remember names. I really do. Okay. Anyway, the main victim, not his doppelganger. Uh, they found out that he had actually been set up with another guy um, who was also his doppelganger. Which is very weird that this guy had two doppelgangers that... You know. Huh. I wonder how many doppelgangers I have. Anyway. But they found this guy. He came in to talk to him and said, you know, this guy wanted him to take a, a DNA test for him down at this lab. Come to find out, he was suspected of um, killing this guy in his frat way back in college. Like, they had just discovered the bones of the guy who had gone missing. And because he was the last one, um, he, it seemed like he was the one who did it because he was taking forever to turn in the DNA. It was a voluntary thing, so they didn't have to. But everybody else had done it. So he was the most likely suspect. The guy who killed him turned out to be the younger brother of the guy who went missing and ultimately was dead. Um, and so you're like, okay, that's, that's interesting. But then they're like, well, so you attacked, you attacked this other guy. His name was Dorian. I remember his name. Because he had a very distinct name, I guess. I don't know. Um, so you attacked this other guy who set him up with the doppelganger, right? But no, I didn't. I didn't attack him. I killed. He admitted to the killing the two guys, but did not admit to the attacking. They also find out that the the main victim. They found some DNA under the uh, 
<clears throat> under the fingernails of the, the guy that went missing and was ultimately dead, the DNA didn't match. So this guy, he got attacked by somebody else, and the guy that got killed wasn't actually the killer of this other guy that they assumed he was. And you come to find out that um, it was the, the head of this company, and they questioned him earlier in the episode because the Dorian kid was looking into his business and finding some like fraudulent, uh, I, th I think they were like a, I forget what they were selling, but they were selling flawed equipment, and the kid knew about it. And so they were looking into him for that, found out that, you know, he didn't. Um, well, I, I can't remember exactly what, he had like some reason he didn't or something like that. But they found out that he wasn't a part of the frat, but he was trying to get in. But because the frat got shut down after the kid, after the guy went missing, his name wasn't in the frat uh, list of names. But he was still a suspect. And then they found out that he had actually gotten this Dorian kid to find a doppelganger for him, sent that in on the blood test, and tried to take out Dorian so people wouldn't connect it back to him. But meanwhile, Dorian, first of all, got away um, and escaped. And then the other guy, was it was taking a longer time to find his doppelganger because the first guy backed out. And by the time he had the second doppelganger found, the, the younger brother had already decided he was the killer. Um, so they were both there when the guy died, but this CEO guy was the one that actually killed him. And that's a nice twist. You know, just the fact that you find the killer of these two new victims, but that's not the whole story. You know, there's more to it. And that's... It, it, not a lot of crime shows do that anymore, you know? Like, when they do do it, when they do it, it's it's always like an extra special thing, you know? It, it's not very often, but elementary tends to mix it up a lot. You know, like, every time you think you figured it out, there's always some twist thrown in, you like, I did not see that coming, that's clever. Um, where is the twist in going back to Bones right now? The twists in that show are always just, oh, I, I, I could see I could see that coming. Or if you didn't see it coming, it's like, really? That was stupid. So anyway, um, like I said, the case is very interesting. But I, I love what they're doing with the dad right now. Because Sherlock finds out he's still in town, goes to confront him about it. He gives him this story about this piece of business he's trying to do with this lady. Um... I can't remember the details of it right now, but he's trying to work out some business deal with him. Sherlock helps him, thinking you know, once he's done with this, he'll be out of town, out of my life. And then he comes to him at the end of the episode and says, truth is, I could have done that anywhere. The reason I'm still here is because I want to be near you. And once again, because I talked about last review how when Watson went to see him, he kind of seemed menacing, he seemed evil in a way, and so you, you kind of, you can picture, you know, Sherlock has obviously said a lot of bad things about him, but most of those things are, is he just saying it because he doesn't like his dad, you know, is that, is that the reason? But in the last episode, you kind of saw that person, the, the father that he has described, you saw that person come out of him. He was very menacing, he was very, why, why go kicking over rocks if you don't want to know what's under them? And I was just like, okay, so maybe this guy is, as bad as Sherlock says. But in this, at the end of this episode, he, he, it's like he wants to help Sherlock. He wants to be there for his son. I'm just like, is this guy good or bad? I can't tell. And I love the fact that they're doing it this way. You know, it's not, it's not just, okay, yeah, he's bad. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding again. It's like, it, it's going back and forth, and you really can't tell whether or not you can trust him. Um, so I'm just, I'm excited to see where they're taking it. It seems like, you know, obviously he's going to be around for most of this season. Um, 
So I'm curious to see where they take that story. You know, what's going to happen with him now. So anyway, uh, that's, you know, I, I like where that story's going. The case itself was very interesting. Uh, they've got that old chemistry back between Gregson and Bell and Sherlock and Watson. Um, but, you know, all, all of it was just very interesting stuff and enjoyable. Um, and unfortunately, I can't say that about all the shows that I'm watching right now, so... Yeah. To say that it's a fully enjoyable episode is very well done. Um, so yeah, that's... I think that's about it for this episode. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.